Welcome everyone. Today we have the pleasure of having Dr. Ho join us at our Hearing Academy webinar. Good morning, Dr. Ho. Thanks for joining us today at our WSA Hearing Academy webinar. And I know that you know you, one of the greatest passion you have in this field and based on your experience is um, to research on the findings between hearing loss and cognitive decline. So I would like to hear from you, you know, based on your personal um, findings and your research findings, what are some of the greatest takeaways that you have for this? Okay. Good morning, April. Thank you very much for mm -hmm. uh, giving me this opportunity to share on this topic. Um, I think for the, on the research, research side, mm -hmm. to summarize, yeah. Uh, within Singapore, uh, if you look at the population of patients that we see in the, the hospital, right? Uh, for those patients with hearing loss who accept hearing aids, um, the profile of the patients um, is quite interesting. Uh, we have found that they, are, they have quite advanced hearing loss. Advanced. Yeah, uh, almost severe. And what, uh, what do I mean by that is that if you look at their audiogram, yeah. uh, the average uh, uh, thresholds would be 67 decibel. 67? Yeah. That's and that's mm, mm. in the better hearing ear. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And the average age for them, for those who accept hearing yeah. it, is about 70. Okay, yeah. so 67 decibels hearing loss, and at the age of them acting on it, it's at the age of 70. Correct. Okay, yeah. wow. Mm -hmm. That's something easy, easy to remember 67, 70. Mm. So, Doctor, what about based on your personal experience as a clinician, right? Um, how, what are sort of the common findings that you have about hearing loss and, and that, how, did that, how does that link to the impact of their lives? Okay, I, I'm glad you asked that yeah. because this is probably the more important and more interesting part of my job, the human interaction, right? So, I must have seen hundreds of patients over the years and there are certain common trends, certain traits with these mm. patients and uh, usually they will come with their caregivers. It could be their children or grandchildren. grandchildren yeah, yeah. Because the patients, some of them are quite elderly mm -hmm. by the time they present. And it's interesting that even when you have the autogram in front of you showing you know, pretty advanced hearing loss, when you ask the patient about the hearing loss, they will say, mm, uh, I'm okay, I don't think my hearing is that bad. And they will often say, I can Look, hear you, doctor, yeah, no worry. Yeah, right? see, yeah. We can, we're having this conversation, but of course, th this would be the ideal environment, right? One-to-one, -one, quiet, face-to-face, -face, which you don't often get in the real world. For sure. Yeah. And, and of course, at this point, um, I would need to ask them the right sort of questions. To, yeah, yeah. And get them to understand the, 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 the impact the hearing has on their, on their life, yeah. right? And their lifestyle. And what is very common, right? Um, you, you soon help them realize that even though they are having conversations with their families, maybe friends, uh, a lot of times uh, these conversations have been reduced to transactional conversations. Interesting, transactional conversations. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what, what, do, what do I mean by that? It's, it's having those sort of simple conversation, right? Um, where you have simple answer, yes, so no. So close, close ended. Yes, correct. Yes, yeah. no, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's like, mom, have you had your breakfast? And that, sometimes you find yeah. that they're actually guessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because even then, they they will be struggling. So I think once you get them to realize um, that they are no longer having the relationship building sort of conversations mm. that we take for granted, right? Correct. It's those conversations where you can talk about current affairs. Yes. Heart to heart talk. Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah. A gossip. Gossip. <laughs> indeed. Telling jokes. That's right. Talking about current affairs, like yeah. a war in Ukraine, you know, things like that. So they, they would then realize, gosh, it's been 10 years since I had these sort of conversations with my children. Mm. And, and I think that would be the point that it clicks that, hey, yes, they are communicating, but it's very limited. Mm. And then the next stage would be to help them realize the impact this has on their relationship. Yes, that's right. Uh, so a lot of my patients, they are fortunate enough to be living with their extended family still. Mm -hmm. But even though they're surrounded by children, grandchildren, you find that they are also isolated mm -hmm. because of the amount and level of conversations that they have is still limited. 
And because so, they, they kind of like withdraw themselves, yeah, more depressed, Correct, more anxious. Yeah. Correct, yeah, you, you observe these uh, personality changes. Yes. And a, a common thing they would say, oh, at the dinner table, uh, someone crack a joke and the rest of the table would laugh and they'll be the one looking around and they would pretend to laugh at the end and not knowing what the joke was all about, you know, so... Yeah, it, that's, that's uh, pretty common. Yeah, yeah, I, even, yeah, I mean, I noticed that from like my grand uncles as well. Yeah. yeah, they would just try to find out what's going on, but, you know, they, they essentially yeah. don't know what's going on. Yeah. yeah. So I think the key is to help the patient realize the impact the hearing loss has on their lifestyle and relationships. That's absolutely right, Apoho. Thanks for sharing.